Howdy folks, welcome back to Steampunk Test Rado channel. Well it's that time again, March 17th, when millions of Americans pretend to be Irish so we can put on green and drink green beer or Irish coffee in celebration of St. Patty's Day. So, in honor of the dear old Emerald Isle and in honor of Mrs. Desperado, who happens to be Irish American, I'm going to talk about Irish writers in science fiction. And as a lot of you may know, Ireland has a long and glorious literary history, including in the early days of fantasy. Writers such as Jonathan Swift of Gulliver's Travels and Bram Stoker, who wrote Dracula. But it's a little bit more complicated than that, and it's something that's well worth checking out. So as I said, today is St. Paddy's Day, and the Irish have this wonderful literary tradition, and you might think that that makes perfect sense, because there's all this great folklore, all this, these wonderful tales, such as of leprechauns and other fae creatures. The leprechaun is a solitary fairy, they say. That's probably because he's such a grouch, <laughs> and he, he's a miser, and he likes to play mean tricks on people. So that's where the leprechaun is at. Now, it's interesting to note that Mrs. Desperado, in her childhood, she recalls that her grandmother, one of her grandmothers at least, believed in leprechauns, and she was always a little worried about the children when they were playing out in the yard at dusk. Because I guess that's kind of the time when the leprechauns come and scare the sprites away, the sprites who would protect them otherwise, and she would, you know, call the children in, just in case, you know, those leprechauns, they're kind of mean and dangerous. So, anyway, it's also interesting to note that the leprechaun is a very recent, historically speaking, innovation in Irish folklore. Early on, the Irish had a mythology that involved all these gods and goddesses, and really very little about the Fae, if anything. And originally, Ireland was populated by monsters. They were called uh, the Fonorians, I believe, something like that. And, yeah, Fomorians, excuse me. And these gods and goddesses came in and kicked those monsters out, and this allowed the Irish people to move in, the humans, and a lot of the early Irish kings, they would get the endorsement from an Irish god or goddess in order to rule. So somehow from there, and, you know, through Christianity and uh, into the folklore, perhaps Christianity was why it got morphed, and the influence of St. Patrick, of course, perhaps that's why we went to leprechauns and fairies and banshees and other creatures such as that. So back to Irish role in fantasy. Uh, most of the early fantasy writers from Ireland had one thing in common. And uh, see if you can guess what it is. First of all, we had Jonathan Swift, who was born in the 1600s, who wrote Gulliver's Travels, which is a fantasy, but it was also a satire. It was all basically an allegory for political events and so on. And there was Bram Stoker, who wrote Dracula. C.S. Lewis, who was born in Belfast, who wrote the wonderful Narnia series and Oscar Wilde, better known as a playwright, but he also wrote The Picture of Dorian Gray, his best-known novel, which is a fantasy. So what did these all have in common? They were all Anglo-Irish. They were all of English descent, having grown up and been born in Ireland from English settlers there. So, of course, we can consider them Irish in that they were born and raised there, but on the other hand, they were also uh, a different ethnicity. There's not nearly as big a contribution of the ethnic Irish to the fantasy and sci-fi genres, although it is there. And, in fact, a lot of Irish lament that. There was an article in the Irish Times of 2018, which I found when I was researching for this, uh, called A Brilliant Void, A Selection of Classic Irish Science Fiction. It was a review of that book that had just come out. An Irish sci-fi writer called Jack Fennell, I am not familiar with any of his work, nor am I familiar with any of the writers in this anthology, but a guy named Ed Power, who wrote this article, was reviewing this book, and also lamenting the lack of interest in science fiction in Ireland. 
and they talked about some of the early writers from the 1800s, including uh, William McGinn, who wrote uh, an homage to Mary Shelley called The New Frankenstein, and Margaret Wolfe Hungerford, who wrote The Professor's Experiment. And these sound like very steampunkish. It sounds like very much we would enjoy those. So for that reason, I am definitely going to look up this this anthology. It's too bad I didn't see this a little earlier, because otherwise I would have had a chance to read it. And when I do read it, I think I'll report back to you guys and tell you how it went. Uh, now, there's also some modern writers, including uh, one called Cathal O. Sander, who wrote a story called The Exile, who actually wrote it in Irish. Because remember, Ireland has its own language, which was unfortunately supplanted by the language of the conquerors, English. And so a lot of these writers were rediscovering their heritage and writing in their native language. Of course, it needs to be translated into English to have a wider audience. And so this was a modern story, this one, The Exile, about a man who left County Kerry for a lunar colony and uh, became homesick for dear old Ireland. And an interesting thing to note about this uh, anthology by Fennell is about half of them are women. And he notes that uh, science fiction written by women in the 19th century was often dismissed as fairy tales. And that sort of goes with what I was saying in my video of a couple weeks ago about women in sci-fi, in that women have been dominant in, in fantasy, but men have definitely ruled the science fiction roost to the extent that a lot of women took on male names to write for the genre. Now, as far as ethnic Irish, most of the most notable and most famous Irish writers have been in, like, literary fiction, and which I haven't had much interest in until lately. Uh, people like George Bernard Shaw and uh, James Joyce and uh, W.B. Yeats and Samuel Beckett. All very notable writers, to be sure, but, you know, some of them aren't that accessible, especially Joyce. And he was well known for his novel Ulysses, which was banned from the United States, and in fact banned in Ireland, believe it or not, for obscenity, <laughs> for a very mild sex scene in one of its many, many chapters. Now, although this isn't one of the things I would normally read because it's very literary and modernist, I may have to read it at some point just to see what it's like and, and see what all the fuss is about. It's supposedly written in kind of stream of consciousness, sort of fashion, in which case I probably have to do it as an audiobook to get through it. <laughs> Nonetheless, I think it is something that I need to try. So there's a brief survey of science fiction, or the lack thereof, in Ireland. So to go on and progress, we need to talk about Irish Americans. And in that case, there are many. First of all, Anne McCaffrey, both an Irish American and Irish because she moved to Ireland in the middle of her career because of this tax break for writers that the Irish government had implemented. And she wrote the wonderful and very imaginative Dragon Writers of Pern series. Fantasy-like, but also science fiction, because the dragons are biological entities from another alien world. They are telepaths and they can fly, but they do not breathe fire. Next writer on my list is Anne Rice, who wrote Interview with a Vampire, and the rest of the Vampire Chronicles. I made it some very notable movies, and kind of kick-started the uh, vampire craze, uh, the first vampire craze before Twilight. Then uh, this was the one back in the 1990s. And sadly, she passed away in 2021. Next is Roger Zelazny. Now, with a name like that, you wouldn't think Irish, but his mother was actually Irish. Her maiden name was Josephine Sweet. His father was uh, Polish. His last name is a Polish name. He was a very, very prolific writer and won tons of awards, both Nebula and Hugo. His most famous work and the one I enjoy the most was uh, The Chronicles of Amber, which starts with Nine Princes of Amber, kind of a fantasy slash interdimensional sci-fi involving all these different planes of existence, and also the novel Lord of Light, which was about a bunch of humans who went to another planet and set themselves up as gods in the Hindu pantheon. Here's another one that I hadn't read until recently, though I had heard of his works, because 
you always saw it in the bookstores and on, you know, in ads and stuff. R.A. Lafferty. There's a good Irish name for you. And his real name was Raphael Aloysius. <laughs> and that is as Irish as you can get. And he was also very prolific. And he wrote a lot of short stories. In fact, Neil Gaiman called him the best sci-fi short story writer ever. And I have not read anything by him except this one I've recently read, which is called Past Master. It's about a bunch of human colonists on another world who come back into Earth history to take Sir Thomas More as their leader to lead them through this time of troubles. Because they're looking for an honest man, basically a man with principle. And so it's a very interesting book. It's got a lot of weird kind of legendary mythological feel to it. Uh, kind of a magical feel. It kind of reminds me of the uh, new weird, as, as they call it in science fiction, uh, exemplified by writers like China Mieville. Uh, but in this case, everything's a little strange. People morph and change. There's this strong element of magic. But because of the themes of space travel and interplanetary colonization, it gets classified as science fiction. So it's very much out of the regular mold of sci-fi. It's considered to be quirky <laughs> and, uh, and almost like tall tales and a very, again, like I said, very mythical, very magical. And I have to mention this guy, this next guy, Cormac McCarthy, who is not really a sci-fi writer, but he did write one very outstanding sci-fi novel, uh, The Road, a very horrifying, depressing, post-apocalyptic novel, which I did read and I did get depressed. <laughs> and he's written much other great stuff. Most of it has been made into movies. Very, very celebrated and acclaimed, although well known for the violence and brutality in some of his works. Finally, I have to mention an actual Irishman who is alive, like McCarthy. All the rest are deceased that I've spoken about. And uh, he's working today. And this guy is Yoyan Colfer. I'm trying to pronounce that correctly. I hope I got it right. And he wrote the very interesting Artemis Fowl series, which I read to my kid in the days gone by. And it's about a young boy genius. I think he invents things, and he also travels down to the Fey realm in the underworld. So it's a very fascinating adventure. So Colfer is a fantasy writer, but he's also a sci-fi writer because he's been tapped to continue the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series, which was invented by Douglas Adams, the noted British writer, who sadly passed away in his mid-50s from a cerebral hemorrhage while exercising. <laughs> so make of that what you will <laughs> about the perils of exercise. And so he's a, one Irish fantasy writer who has made it good in the modern day. So this is my list. This is all I have for my brief survey of Irish writers in the fantasy and sci-fi genres. So if any of you have any good recommendations of stuff I should read and or review, please let me know. I'd love to do that. Please like and subscribe so we continue to promote steampunk and bring it back. Uh, bring it back to be as popular as it was 10, 15 years ago. And to also promote the wonderful literature of science fiction and fantasy in general. For now, this is the Steampunk Desperado saying adios amigos and happy St. Patty's Day from the Steampunk Desperado channel where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary. Mm -hmm.